So today we're going to be talking uh, more in detail about resources and supports. So we have talked about uh, community resources and things like that in some of the earlier presentations that we've already gone through. But now we're going to talk more so about uh, resources and support for the individual who has been diagnosed with the disease and their caregiver. So this is going to be um, really beneficial information for you guys to pass on when you're in the workforce and things. So today's overview is identifying our support systems, our quality of life, working with your doctor, caring for yourself, and benefits of leisure. So just to get first off define support systems, this is a network of people who provide an individual with practical and emotional supports. So who are normal supports that you have found useful? first person that I think of are parents. So mom and dad, which then is family. So family and friends. These are the first people that I think of when it comes to support systems. The first link program is uh, the main support system that uh, we have begun providing this year here at the Alzheimer's Society. And this support system has been put in place for individuals who are living with Alzheimer's disease or related dementia, or if someone who is supporting them, so a family member who may have taken over a caregiving role, a friend, or someone like this. So First Link ultimately connects you to uh, health services and information in your community. And this is from the time of diagnosis, we hope, until and through the whole continuum of the disease. Sometimes we will connect with individuals when they may be um, past the early stages and beginning of diagnosis of the disease, but we still want to be able to connect with them to give them the access to the support that they need. So it's about um, helping families and uh, friends make more informed choices so they can live better with dementia and then at every stage of the disease. I included the link there for um, our website uh, which has the first link information there for some more details if you ever in the future wanted those or if you just want to go check them out. So just to uh, mention our support services in our community, um, these are different ones on a uh, general basis which you may be able to access. So adult day programs, some pretty uh, major ones that are offered here in the St. John's area would be at uh, St. Luke's Homes and things like that. Then Meals on Wheels is a program that is uh, province-wide, so that is even in uh, some rural and outport communities too. So it's always good to keep your eyes open for that because support even for one or two meals out of the day can be pretty a pretty big difference for a caregiver. If you think about the effort that you just put into making a meal every day after you've come home from working or school and how tiring that is, think about if you're providing 24-hour care for another individual and you have to have your eye on that individual while you're trying to prep this meal when cooking is something that your eyes always have to be on because we know we're going to boil over the pot or something like that. So the Meals on Wheels is a really great program to uh, tap into even just for simple things like that. Community services, so all sorts of uh, community uh, services around seniors, uh, the Seniors Resource Center, 50 plus seniors clubs, Lions clubs, legions, there's all sorts of organizations like this in each and every community throughout the province. So they're always great to tap into for uh, that support, whether you're a member of that organization or you decide to join to create that support system for yourself. The Smart Fitness Program and all other programs of the uh, VON, Victorian Order of Nurses, are uh, pretty great. The Smart Fitness one is a great way to stay active and healthy and to stimulate yourself and uh, stay pretty productive in your day-to-day -day life. And that one is through volunteers at the VON. Home care services and long-term care services can be accessed through our health professionals in your health region, whether it be here in uh, Eastern or in Western or wherever you are located, but that can go through our health professionals. And they are always a great support and very knowledgeable in the field. So I want to talk about working with your doctor. 
And I actually have these, um, these great sheets up here as well, which uh, come along with the First Link program. And they're not only for our First Link clients, but for others as well. And if you want to take a copy of them here today, they are up front. And I started doing uh, something new as well. I've pulled a lot of uh, resources, which I'm going to mention today, and I put them on display up front so you know more specifically what we have here on hand and what we're talking about if you want to take some of this away. So this sheet here is uh, tips for visits. It helps you get prepared so you can ask specific questions and things. You um, know that your doctor's appointment is coming up. You've had it booked for quite some time now. So why not make up a list of issues that you would like to discuss? Changes in symptom, general health, how medications are uh, mixing together, whatever it may be that has arose that you know that you need a health professional to answer. And then write it down, have that list ready, Use uh, this sheet that is by the College of Family Physicians and the First Link program to help you with that as well. Because if you don't understand something, you really do need to ask the questions. Don't be afraid to speak up and uh, you really need to ask for that help because the more education that you have around this disease and the more education that you have from your health professionals and us as a society and other community groups, then the better that you're going to be able to care for your loved one and the better you're going to be able to uh, cope with this disease. And these are things that you can, as for, or, uh, sorry, <laughs> as PCA work, future PCA workers, I was going to say former, <laughs> you will be able to uh, let your uh, patients and their families know about this stuff. So more tips for the visits is gather information. So be prepared to take notes during your appointment. So when you get home, you'll be able to review that and have that with you so you're not trying to tell the family about it and recall everything. And it's also good to bring someone else along to the visit so you have an extra set of ears for support and someone else who may pick up on something that you missed during the uh, appointment. I like to always talk about the pharmacist because uh, for ongoing support, um, whether it be just a day-to-day -day question on a health issue and we know that it can be very difficult sometimes to get in to see our doctors with wait times and things like that. So pharmacists are always a great professional to keep in mind because they can be an important resource if you ever have a, a question that you want answered right away. You know that the pharmacy is open um, on a longer range of hours than a clinic is and you can just walk in there without an appointment. So quality of life. Quality of life is different for everyone and it of course is deeply personal. So what exactly gives us quality of life? Our physical and mental health, our living arrangements, our social relationships, our cultural values, our sense of community, our financial and economic circumstances, and our religious beliefs and spirituality. So it says here, despite changes and loss of abilities, people with Alzheimer's disease are still able to find pleasure and of course experience satisfaction. So recognizing these abilities, interests, and lifeline skills helps to maintain that person's quality of life. So they may not be able to um, perform these uh, abilities and interests and things like that in the same manner that they did before, but it's to adjust for the level that they can perform at now and to reward them for that and to praise them for that accomplishment. So it's finding a balance um, for family members who are caregivers. It's to find a balance between your own quality of life and the quality of life for the person that you're caring for as well. Because you do want to remember that your own quality of life needs to maintain intact as well. So this is a, an Alzheimer's request and this is a really nice uh, poem that I like to include that 
uh, Paul and Agatha Penny, who have been on the journey with Alzheimer's disease for quite some time now. Agatha was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's disease, and she's recently moved into St. Luke's Homes here in St. John's. So this poem actually hangs on Agatha's room wall in um, St. Luke's. In case anyone is to come into her room, they'll see this and understand why she behaves the way she does. So it reads, Do not ask me to remember. Don't try to make me understand. Let, rem let me rest and know you're with me. Kiss my cheek and hold my hand. I'm confused be beyond your concept. I am sad and sick and lost. All I know is that I need you to be with me at all costs. Please do not lose your patience with me. Do not scold me or curse or cry. I can't help the way I'm acting. I can't be different though I try. Just remember that I need you and that the best of me is gone. Please don't fail to stand beside me and love me till my life is done. So that one there is pretty powerful, and it's by Owen Darnell, who he also uh, journeyed with Alzheimer's disease uh, with his wife. He cared for his wife's story. So you can really uh, get the impact from that poem of how an individual feels with this disease. So keep that in mind when uh, you go out there as PCA workers or if you're caring for someone with the disease yourself. So to move on to uh, quality of life again and how we can enhance quality of life for the person with the disease. So first off, and this is my famous last line, knowledge is power. So the more education we get around the disease and then the better we're able to understand how it progresses. So it's also good to consult the person who has the disease. This is the person you're caring for, so you obviously want to know what their likes and dislikes are. It's about their quality of life, so of course we don't want to pressure them into anything that they dislike. Encouraging a sense of feeling useful and valued by fostering strengths and abilities. So speaking um, what we had just touched on before, really promoting accomplishments that um, encouraging the person that the uh, level that they are performing at is perfectly uh, fine and that that's acceptable and that it is amazing that they are performing at that level. Really back them up and give them positive feedback because they will respond positively to that as well. So overall health is also good to keep in mind. Other untreated illnesses can of course worsen symptoms. <coughs> uh, we have talked about urinary <coughs> tract infections before and things like this. So it's good to keep in mind, um, Liz has said this one before, that uh, behaviors, strange behaviors and um, angry behaviors, aggressive behaviors, oftentimes mean that the person may be in pain. This behavior may be a result <coughs> of some other health symptom. So keep these things in mind and, you know, have it in the, on the back burner because we do want to make sure that there's no other health issues arising. and worsening what's already present. So we want to, of course, provide a space that is safe, familiar, and provides a sense of security. These are all uh, very important things to provide for an individual who has a disease. So respecting the need for companionship, Relationships with friends and families should definitely continue and should be fostered as much as possible. And it's to recognize that all actions and behaviors, of course, are meaningful and reflect a desire to communicate. So that's what we had just mentioned before about the behaviors and things that runs both positive and negative. So quality of life of the person with the disease is closely linked to the quality of life of the caregiver. So you have to make sure that you as a caregiver don't burn out as well because if you're not sleeping and you're not eating properly and you're not caring for yourself, then you're not going to be able to properly care for uh, the individual with the disease because you're going to be tired and maybe a bit too quick with um, your words and you may not be as positive as you normally are and as uh, encouraging and things like that because you are drained from not eating healthy, not sleeping and things like that. So your health is just as important as theirs. And of course, meet the person where they are and try to accept their reality. Remember to connect and not correct.